What's going on guys? Today we're going to review the CSCS chapter 14 study guide together. If you haven't watched my other lectures on previous chapters, I have chapters 1 through 13 uploaded now and you can check that out here in this link. Um, but yeah, chapter 14 is on warm-up and flexibility training and we'll dive right into it. Alright, so we're going to start this lecture by talking about warm-ups. So some of the positive impacts on performance. Um, you can see some faster muscle contractions with warm-up, improvement of the rate of force development and reaction time with warm-up as well. Um, improved oxygen delivery due to bore effect. So higher temperature facilitates oxygen release from the hemoglobin and myoglobin units. Um, so that brings in more oxygen to the muscles that we really need to recruit in order for us to perform better. We also have enhanced metabolic reactions here as well. Um, so these are very general things to kind of keep in mind why we warm up before we um, train or before we tend to perform. Right? So sequencing, another very um, general guideline here. Um, start with general warm up, which is aerobic that doesn't really incorporate specific movement patterns and then you move into specific warm-up where now you incorporate um, specific movement patterns that you might actually use in your sport. All right, so RAMP protocol is something that's very commonly used. Um, RAMP stands for raise, activate, mobilize, and potentiate. So when you think of raise, what are we raising? We're raising key physiological parameters by stimulating movement patterns of upcoming activities. So the bore effect that we just talked about in the previous slide is a great example of how we want to improve and facilitate oxygen delivery to certain muscles with warm up. And that's raising that physiological parameter that we want to raise. Activating and mobilizing. Um, a, a good example of this is improving some hip mobility with the warm-ups um, that will help us get into a better um, squat position or a better lunge position right so you can see in this specific warm-up here that you can have the athlete go into different movement patterns that will either enhance or facilitate uh, a certain muscle group in helping the athlete perform that specific movement pattern better Potentiation, um, this is about nerves, right? So focusing on the intensity of the exercise. If the exercise intensity is uh, very high, we want to be able to increase strength of the um, nerve potentiation as much as possible, right? So those are the four things that's included in the RAMP protocol. With flexibility, um, we're measuring range of motion, right? Whether that's measuring the range of motion at the elbow or your knee or your shoulder, whatever joint it is, when we just measure that range of motion at the joint, that's static flexibility, meaning you don't have the person engage their muscles actively. You just measure how much flexibility they have, right? But dynamic, that, that was static, um, dynamic flexibility is available range of motion during an active movement. So if I have the athlete lunge, for example, a, a basic forward lunge, and if they're limited on the way down, that could mean several different things. But one of the things that can limit them from um, descending more and more towards the ground is their hip flexor flexibility, right? So that's an easy way to think about what dynamic flexibility means. Um, now, factors affecting flexibility, we have joint structure. So whether it's a ball and socket joint like our shoulder or a hinge joint like our knee, right? That would make a big difference in how much degrees of freedom we have in those specific movement patterns. We also have age and sex. Um, fibrosis is something that occurs with age. Um, fibrous connective tissue is replacing degenerating muscle tissue as we grow older so we tend to be more stiff as we become older uh, muscle and connective tissue the difference between elasticity and plasticity 
kind of important to know um, elasticity is the capability to return to its original form after being stretched and plasticity is capability to set new limits so um, this will come back in when we talk about PNF patterns but just something to note and then neural control if we have a big muscle bulk obviously that might impede your range of motion at that specific joint and then activity level whether you're a very active person or not could impact how much flexibility you might have now moving on to different types of inhibition this is just a lot of words but it's simple trust me autogenic inhibition is relaxation that occurs in the same muscle that experiences tension so with autogenic inhibition what happens is let's go back to the biceps example um, you contract the biceps and then you relax so everything's happening at that muscle that we're talking about we're talking about no other muscle than the biceps so biceps contracts and then it relaxes active contraction passive stretch now reciprocal inhibition is relaxation in the muscle opposite to the muscle that experiences tension so now we're experiencing tension in the biceps for example right and the triceps relaxes because the triceps is the antagonist or the muscle that does the opposite thing uh, as the biceps so that's an example of reciprocal inhibition now we're talking about two opposing muscle groups so active contraction of the antagonist so now we're gonna go ahead call the triceps antagonist called the biceps agonist contraction of the antagonist results in the passive stretch of the biceps all right different kinds of pnf stretches there's hold and relax um so hold and relax you hold here hold 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 and we're talking about biceps here hold 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 and then relax hold again and then relax hold again and then relax trying to stretch it and try to increase the range of motion after those sets of isometric contractions and then we have contract um, relax this is where we try to contract against resistance and then relax contract against resistance and then relax so it's very similar to hold and relax except it's a concentric action where you're shortening the muscle and then relaxing shortening the muscle and then relaxing last type of pnf stretch is hold relax with agonist contraction now with this one it's the same hold relax hold relax but we add in the agonist contraction so reciprocal inhibition becomes the primary mechanism for this type of stretching and autogenic inhibition becomes secondary mechanism for um, hold relax with agonist contraction pnf stretching moving on to different techniques now we're just going to take a look at different body parts and how we either statically um, stretch them or dynamically stretch them so um, looking left to right stretching our scm mostly flexion and extension stretching all the muscles in your neck area so scm so occipitals in the back and then straight arms behind back um, we're stretching the anterior delts and muscles in the front like pec major and then seated lean back we're stretching the delts here again and then pec major as well in the front um, and then we have the behind the neck stretch where we stretch the triceps and the lat dorsi so just have a general sense of how we can stretch specific muscles Right? How do we stretch the pec major? Oh, easy. We just go ahead, sit, and go ahead and lean back. Right. So that's the whole purpose of these pictures here. Okay, there's more. So cross arm in front of the chest, stretching the posterior delt in the back here, and muscles in the back mostly. Um, arm straight up above head. We're stretching the lats. Right so anything that you do opposite to what the muscle is supposed to do you're stretching that muscle um, spinal twist we're stretching all the obliques here and also the piriformis that's a good piriformis stretch 
um, semi leg, sem, semi leg straddle for stretching the erector spinae, which runs um, all through our spinal um, segments, and then the forward lunge, stretching the iliopsoas, all the hip flexor muscles, and rectus femoris as well, and then supine knee flex is what we do to stretch our hip extensors. Side bend with straight arms, take a note of the muscles that we're stretching there. Side bend with bent arm, also stretching the same kind of muscles. Um, side quadricep stretch, stretching the quads here and then the hip flexors. Sitting toe touch, stretching the muscles in the back, the hamstrings, the gastroc, the soleus. Um, and then the semi straddle is stretching those muscles there, gastroc, hamstrings, and erector spinae. All right, more of static stretch techniques, straddle, uh, stretching your groin mostly, so all the adductors on the inside of your thigh. Butterfly, same thing here. Wall stretch, stretching the calf muscle mostly that tends to really tighten up for a lot of us. And then the step stretch stretches the calf muscle as well. All right, so dynamic stretch techniques. There's arm swings, where you swing your arm back and forth and go into a lunge position, go into marching, just maybe walking, jogging, um, stretching all those muscles in the back mostly, and then some of the pecs. Inchworm is a good way to stretch the muscles in the back as well. So all the posterior chain muscles like the gastroc, the hamstrings, the glutes, um, and then we have the lunge walk and lunge with overhead side reach. So like we talked about with the side reach, we're stretching the muscles on the side pretty much, like the lat, um, maybe some of the QL. And then with lunging, we're stretching those hip flexor muscles. Walking knee lift, we're stretching the glutes in the back and then the, some of the hamstrings. All right, forward lunge with elbow to instep same thing here we're just adding another movement there in order to stretch it looks like some of the muscles in the arm back here and then heel to toe walk we're stretching the gas rocks mostly but as you see the common theme with dynamic stretching is you're moving constantly right it's a continuous motion walking over and under a good way to stretch the abductors on the side and also the adductors and pretty much all the muscle groups in your lower body, like you can see here. Inverted hamstring stretches, a very good dynamic warm up. That's also a very specific movement pattern. It's a hip hinge, right? So, a good way to do those stretching as well, stretching the posterior chain muscles. And then you have the straight leg march, which is also stretching the muscles in the back, and then the Spider Man crawl which is taking care of a lot of things here, as you can see um, in the muscles affected. All these pictures are in your textbook, Essentials of Strength and Conditioning, 4th edition. And that is it for today, guys. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you next week.